Christian hope is not a wish. Christian hope is not a wish. Most of the time when we in our culture use the word hope, what we really mean is wish, right? So we'll say, I hope I lose 10 pounds before bathing suit season. I hope I have a long lost relative I've never met who leaves me millions of dollars. I hope my team wins the World Series. What are we saying? We're saying, I wish those things would happen. I wish I'd magically lose 10 pounds without trying. I wish I'd inherit millions of dollars I didn't work for. I wish my team that hasn't made any changes to its lineup will suddenly play completely different ball and rise to the top of the division. Culturally, when we say hope, what we mean is wish. But the New Testament is different. The New Testament word, the Greek word for hope is Elpis, E-L-P-I-S. I I want you to say Elpis out loud. One, two, three, go. Elpis, yeah. And that word doesn't mean wish. It actually means confident expectation. Let me show you a few examples of this. We could do a lot. We're just gonna do a few of them. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3 says, since we have such an Elpis, we're very bold. Think about this. A wish doesn't make you bold. A wish can't make you bold. Rather, A confident expectation makes you very bold. Look at the next one in the book of Hebrews chapter nine. This elpis is a strong anchor. A wish is not an anchor. A confident expectation is a trustworthy anchor for our souls. Look at the next one, Romans 15. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. The scriptures give us elpis and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promise to be fulfilled. The scriptures don't give us a wish. We're not wishing that things will be fulfilled. We have a confident expectation in God's promises. Christian hope is not a wish. And we have to understand this because Genesis 50 verse 20, God intended it all for good. That's our destiny. It's not a wish. It's something different. When scripture uses the word hope, it talks about a confident expectation. And to go even deeper, it's all based on the empty tomb. See, Joseph could look back on his life to see that God intended it for good. The Christian looks back on the empty tomb to see that God intended it all for good. This is why Paul's rant in 1 Corinthians 15 is so important. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. This is the reason for our faith. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. Why do we believe that? Because he was seen by Peter and the 12. He was seen by more than 500 at one time. He was seen by James and later all the apostles. And last of all, even I saw him. And this is the same reason Paul later says, if Christ hasn't been raised, our faith is futile. Okay, that is logical, but how do we know Christ has been raised? Raised, 1 Corinthians 15, because he was seen, our hope is real. See, the Christian doesn't wish The Christian has hope, which is something different. Which means when the pangs of grief sneak up on you about your loved one who has since died and gone to heaven because they have faith in Jesus, and that voice of skepticism starts going and saying, are you sure about this whole eternity thing? Are you sure you're ever gonna see them again? You don't wish you'll see them again because of the empty tomb. You have a confident expectation that due to your faith in Jesus, you will see them again. When the chronic pain is relentless, you don't wish it'll go away and say, I wish the doctors just knew more about medicine so they could help my situation. No, you have a confident expectation that one day you'll be raised with a glorified body. When you fall to the same sin again and again are face to face with how deplorable you are, you don't wish you'd get better. You have confident expectation that even after your sin is fresh, that God is still working in you even though you don't see the fruit yet. I was with a friend this week who I've been journeying with for several years now, um, and he had told me when we first started talking about this that he was exposed to pornography against his will at a very young age, multiple times, and it developed in, in him this irresistible habit, I don't know what else to call it, but an addiction, and he has sought all kinds of help 
secular and Christian to try and conquer this temptation, and most of it has been futile. So he was excited to let me know this week that he had hit an all-time record days in a row of being porn-free after years of fighting. He had 18 days in a row of being porn-free. Now, I was really excited for him and told him how proud I was. He's a little embarrassed that the number was so low, but also proud of himself at the same time. But here's the thing. If he buys into worldly thinking about hope, he'll think, I'm just wishing God would change me. And next time he falls, he'll give up. But when he understands that Christian hope is based on the empty tomb, that it is a confident expectation that God is going to forgive him and purify him and strengthen him and give him a healthy marriage, then he'll be able to walk forward in faith knowing God's got me even if I don't see it. See, if you want to know God has a destiny for you, understand Christian hope is not a wish. 